Hi, I'm Nate Harbin, Territory Manager with AY McDonald. And today I'd like to talk to you about purging correctly with a sacrificial valve. And for starters, let's talk about why we purge. The reason that you purge is to clean out your main to riser. Let's get the line completely um, rid of any contaminations, uh, whether it be debris, rock, metals, um, air pockets. Um, you certainly want to get rid of any, any air so that you're getting a, a correct pressure readings. So th those are, again, reasons why you purge. So now I'm going to talk to you about how you could purge incorrectly. The way to purge incorrectly is to just use your riser valve and then to crack that valve just a little bit. And certainly the reason that you're only going to crack it a little bit, not open it fully, is you would run the risk of tripping the excess flow valve. So currently, if you're going to do it incorrectly, you would just take your current riser valve, crack it just a little bit. Well, if you are using a plug valve as your riser valve, you've got what, 40, 50, maybe 60 pounds coming up and hitting that plug, uh, plug valve and it's going to blow the grease right off of the valve, making it non-sealable. So you'd have to re-lubricate it to create a seal again. You also run the risk of blowing grease onto the house. So that, that's, a, that's why you don't want to do it certainly with a plug valve. With a ball valve, you're using a ball valve for your riser valve, you don't want to do that approach either. Because again, as we spoke on earlier, you're shooting debris out. You've got rock, metal, other contaminations, and you run in the risk of the port seals on the ball valve getting nicked up. And you're going to potentially get a leak, either, if not today, even down the road from a small nick you put into it. So how is it that we protect our riser valve with sacrificial valves? We've got two sacrificial valve tools that I'm introducing to you today. One is if you have an insulated riser valve, this is what you'd use. The other one, if you just have a non-insulated riser valve, this is what you'd use. So what you do for creating and making a, a, a sacrificial valve is for an insulated one, just take a nipple, put it on the inlet, remove your end piece from the top and connect it to the nipple in the bottom. So now what's that going to allow us to do? I'm going to remove our end piece on my riser and I'm going to just use my sacrificial valve and connect it to my riser valve. Right now I've got my riser, uh, my good riser valve in the off position as well as my sacrificial valve in the off position. With the sacrificial valve, I can just go ahead and open up my good riser valve all the way. And now, with my sacrificial valve, I'll go ahead and just open it slightly and bleed it out and then purge through my sacrificial valve. This way it doesn't matter if we're going to have too much pressure hitting that core on the plug valve or it, it won't matter if we've got debris coming out. It's not going to damage any port seals on a ball valve. Once you've purged to your utility specifications, shut off your sacrificial valve, shut off your riser valve, remove your sacrificial valve and put on your end piece for your riser valve. So as you see, this would be a tool that every one of your field technicians that, that uh, performs this uh, task should have in their vehicle or your contractors that you're using. They should all have this if they're performing this task, a sacrificial valve. One with an insulated end or just a standard non-insulated one with a standard valve, uh, standard nipple on the end. Once again, I'm Nate Harbin. If you found this video helpful, give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.